Honey, come on over here, sugar buns. This machine just called me an asshole. <laughs> Welcome to Castle Rock Radio. I am Max Booth. And I am Lori Michelle. And this is the Steaming Keen Podcast. No it, shit. It, wow. <laughs> rude. Why is that rude? Maybe they don't know. Maybe they think, oh, okay, I'm going to see what's going on in Castle Rock, Colorado. And then, oh shit, now they have a Steaming Keen Podcast. Surprise, we have to let them know ahead of time. Oh, I see. Is there anything going on in Castle Rock, Colorado? I don't know. We don't live in Colorado. No, we don't. It's not even ski season there. All right. Uh, <laughs> if you've never joined us before, it'll be, uh, well, I think you get the gist of it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's coming on today? Today's special guest is Jeremiah Israel, author of Live On No Evil. Which is the book we just released through all small press, Perpetual Motion Machine. Correct. If you like strange, um, mystical, conspiracy theory, aliens, you name it, it's in there. This is the book you want. So after listening to this podcast, go pick it up. We'll pause it, go, go buy it, it up. and then rejoin us. We'll let this podcast continue to play and just go and buy it on, on online. You could do both at the same time. It's amazing. This is the... This is the Life age. we live now. Yes, you can multitask. The modern... The modern multitasking. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I guess let's go ahead and get him on. All right, well, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you for having me. So, um, briefly, can you tell the audience a bit about yourself and what you've done to the universe? Yeah, my name is Jeremiah Israel, and that's my real name. It's not a pseudonym. Uh, it's my first and middle, because I come from a, a very religious family. Grew up in the church as a pastor's kid, and, and now I uh, don't do any of that religious bullshit anymore. And they love me for it. But I have uh, twin daughters and a girlfriend. And I live in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, writing books. And working at the slave ship. And it's awesome sometimes and sometimes it's not. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's what I do. Man, that surprises me kind of given the book you've just written. Has, I, <laughs> has anyone in your family read it? Um, my brothers have, and yeah, I think they're liking it, you know, and like, I mean, it's kind of like some of their experiences, uh, you know, are taken from our, some of our experiences are, you know, in the book, I guess, in some form or another, but yeah, 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 my dad read my first book, but he said he only read, he read parts of it, and you know, he was, <laughs> it was kind of a funny conversation, but you know, we do what we can, they're great grandparents for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So, tell us just like a bit about Live On No Evil. I mean, pretend like we have no idea what it is. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it's kind of like a spiritual horror uh, novel about um, a third dimensional god or god entity that's come to Earth to give human beings a different option uh, between like heaven and hell. And so it follows the story of a little boy named Backpack that is um, going through a test to become loyal unto the Neon Three, which is that god entity. And um, he's trying to find who the pet threat is, which is a animal serial killer in uh, Spectrum City that is going on killing uh, dogs and anything he can get his hands on, basically. So... And yeah, and then they um, that leads to the library of labyrinth and all the insanity that goes on there through more tests to become loyal unto uh, Sahasa, the Neon Three. Yeah, man. I mean, it's a it's an intense book. It's a lot going on with it, especially once you get into the labyrinth. How much like planning went into this book? 
Uh, a lot. Yeah, I mean, I I wanted to have like just too many characters, and that was kind of um, <laughs> like that's a good goal. Yeah, was, yeah, the the that's what somebody told me with the first time uh, my first book, which isn't published. They said you just have too many characters, and I was like, well, fuck you, and then I'm gonna make <laughs> like way too many, and so uh, yeah, I just have a whole list and all their names and all the different things about them, and one of the things that one of the things I like about having so many characters is you get to then just break them down into just um, kind of like images in your mind. So like their names just become like who they are just so you can remember them, so the audience can remember them. But it also just creates this weird insanity of like too much going on, but um, I don't know. It's great. I love it. I don't know. Makes sense to so, yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if, um, if any of you... Folks want to read that book? You should go do it. Definitely do it after this podcast. I'll pause it and then go buy it, and then come back <laughs> and join us. It's <laughs> a good thing about podcasts; you can just pause it. That's right. So, uh, what was your gateway Stephen King book? What Stephen King book basically hooked you for life? Uh, it started with Salem's Lot. That's the first book that I read because mm-hmm. I had seen um. Uh, you know, the it, uh, like, many serious thing right. and little parts of stuff. But that first uh, the first part uh, where he's talking about, um, I, I don't even remember the main character's name anymore, but, like, he's talking about going into that haunted house and uh, walking up the stairs, and he sees the uh, ghost hanging from a noose and his eyes open. And that just, that scared the shit out of me. I remember thinking, like, oh, my God, this is the scariest fucking thing ever. <laughs> yeah. And I loved it. But then, you know, come to find out it's a book about vampires. And I fucking hate vampires. So it kind of ended up becoming a little bit <laughs> sour for me. But it's still really good, you know. It's all really great. I think that happens sometimes with Stephen King books. Like, I'll start it, be all about it. And then, you know, it either gets too long or I'm just, you know, I get bored. But, um I yeah, I know it's still great for sure. I think that could be said about a lot of books. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Too many books are just too long. Yeah. All right. Sure. I have anything else? I can't think of. Um. One. No. No. Okay. Well, let's get into this. All right. We're doing Children of the Corn. We are. Yeah. That's with a C, not with a K. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. The band Corn could have kids become a band. They could be children of the Corn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we might be stretching a bit. We might. They'd adopt Ice Cube as their son. <laughs> 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 I actually just listened to that song not too long ago. It's my girlfriend's like favorite old band that she used to love. Corn. They're wonderful. Excellent. I used to be a big Corn fan. <laughs> yeah, I think that's u- that's usually what it is. Everybody says used to be. Yeah. <laughs> hey man, I, I was Limp Biscuits, so. Oh I'm, no. You know, I know, right? It's, it's, just, it's been nice talking to <laughs> you. Yeah. Just because now. <laughs> right. <laughs> I deserve to be murdered for that one. <laughs> I don't know, man. Sometimes you just want to break stuff. <laughs> I I was about to uh, let's just get past the time. <laughs> I'm gonna go back and forth on Limp Bizkit lyrics. This is gonna be it. It's awful. Okay, <laughs> all right, man. This is your way on the highway. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> let's, let's move on. <laughs> I refuse to play this game with you. <laughs> you. Okay. Oh man. All right. So, Children of the Corn. This was published in 1977 in Penthouse Magazine. Yeah, that's the one that people read only for the stories, right? I don't for know. the naked women. Do you want to explain what Penthouse is to me? I, think, I have no idea. I think everybody knows what Penthouse is. Oh, okay. Do you know what Penthouse is, Penthouse is <laughs> Jeremiah? I do. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. And that's actually true that you can buy um, a Playboy or Penthouse just for the stories. That's why I bought Guts, that Chuck Palahniuk story. Yeah. I told the woman that at the counter. She I'm buying not. this she, for sure the she story. You 100%. She did not. She didn't. <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah. But it was bad karma because right after that, I ever. slammed my finger in the door. Oh, man. 
And then it later appeared in the 1978 collection Night Shift. Which was his debut collection. Very exciting. All right. One of his best collections. I agree with that. Besides maybe Skeleton Crew being his best, I think. Yeah, I would probably have to agree with you on that, too. All right, so this one, surprisingly, does not take place in Maine. It does not. It doesn't even take place close to Maine. No, we only... God damn dogs. <laughs> what Sorry, are they going I don't crazy know. About? Let me go find out. Hang on. <laughs> we are a professional podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we have two dogs and a kid running around right now, so we're trying to keep them calm. Nice. Our dogs are locked in cages, and so hopefully that uh, works well. Yeah, we have a cage, but the thing is, they just get pissed off if we leave them in it. Yeah, yeah, I feel like mine are about to start barking soon, so hopefully not. Ah, it's no big deal if they do. <laughs> I think they what? saw something pass outside. <laughs> oh, shit. The cat's walking over the computer now. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> I got him. His, His clerk is a little asshole. His cat began walking over the computer. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. Okay. Yeah. Some dogs will settle. The dogs are settled. They're getting watered. Nice. The kid is settled. He's watching cars. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the other kid's not in the house. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what nice. we will now. We just, we just started. We were saying that it didn't take place in Maine, so we might want to start that again from. Ow, ow. It's in Nebraska. I'll cut it somehow. You're... I'll leave it all in. <laughs> Why pretend like we know what we're doing? We have half a clue. <laughs> only half of one now. <laughs> oh, man. So it begins with, like, this man and woman, they familiate and they just fucking hate each other so much. That's I've noticed that's, like, a typical thing in Stephen King stories and books, that the man and wife are married and they can't stand each other. Yeah, it always begins with them driving and fighting. Yeah. Do you think maybe he and Tabitha were driving and fighting at the time? <laughs> I think probably it's a good, safe bet. Yeah. I think every kind of relationship goes through that point where you just kind of can't stand each other. And you either go past it or... Yeah, I think my mom and dad have always been at that point. <laughs> <laughs> my parents have it, like, every once in a while. They can't get in a vehicle at all without fighting about some stupid shit. <laughs> You just gotta start agreeing with everything, even the bad shit that they say. That's the way to go about it. <laughs> just if, they're, if they're always right, they realize that they don't always want to be right. And that's when it just starts working with silence. <laughs> silence is the key. <laughs> silence is silence. It's the worst advice. <laughs> <laughs> just agree until everybody goes silent. <laughs> I was surprised how, uh, like, just... Easy talks about like wanting to hit her too. Like that's not like it's not a big thing in King's books. Yeah, a lot of well, books that you know, like sometimes. I know even being a child of the seventies that domestic violence was more. It was, it was more, more fad. Co- yeah. Well, no. I mean, yeah. It's more commonplace. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it was before. I don't know if it was before women's lib necessarily, but. Mm, I mean, think about it. We went from the fifties where the housewives you do what the man says yeah. to. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden, the 60s, where the women started becoming more equal. And even in the 70s, they had a hard time. I mean, women were still put down then. I also think it probably depends on where you grew up and how. That might because, be true, too. I mean, how I remember my small town, this type of talk was still pretty commonplace, even in the late 90s. But I grew up in a shitty town. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. so, like, I, I mean, even if you watch, like, old TV shows, I mean, they threaten to hit their wives all the time. Yeah, so, it's, I mean, it's, it's not a big... It's usually uh, played off as a joke. <laughs> it's not yeah. a big deal. He's fine. Yeah. <laughs> One of these days, Alice. That's what trying to yeah, say. Yeah, pow, to the moon, yeah. <laughs> Beat the shit out of you, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, I, I don't know if readers back then would have thought anything of it like we do now. Yeah. <sighs> But it was also in penthouse. Oh, that's true. <laughs> so the Regals were like, ah, yeah. I get, beat the I, shit out of her. I get this guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck. 
so they're arguing because they've left the highway in the middle of fucking nowhere because if you've ever been to Nebraska, it's nothing but cornfields, literally. Nobody's been to Nebraska. That's because it's nothing but cornfields, so who wants to drive through Nebraska? Have you been to Nebraska? I've driven through Nebraska. What about you, Jill and Naya? I don't remember. I think I slipped asleep throughout the whole way. <laughs> Man, all those Midwest still say it's all the same yeah. thing. <laughs> Yeah. You know what's funny was my brother was in college. He played on the football team in his college. Yeah, that's and funny. One, <laughs> one of his friends went <laughs> off to to N- Nebraska for some sort of convention or football something. He was being, you know, like, I can't think of the word. All right. Anyway, he went to Nebraska. And he said every meal they had something with corn in it. Corn, corn on the cob, corn bread, corn pudding, corn <laughs> stew, <laughs> corn soup. <laughs> So Everybody in Indiana says like corn fed, like like it's yeah. a good thing. I'm proud of. Yeah. I'm originally from Chicago, so when I came here, I never like got why well, that was a good thing to be corn fed. And they put on that like the <laughs> accent that they don't have usually, just to say it too. Never understood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. I'm. I grew up in Indiana. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I have no desire to eat corn now. <laughs> It's always the people too that have like the Confederate flags in the front of their house. Too. <laughs> yeah, hey, we, uh, <laughs> two we do- live in two Texas. We understand about that. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the weird guy two houses down with the Confederate flag. It says "Not coming down" on it, and like his like two kids and his wife that like uh, is not allowed to like talk to anybody. And he has a lot of opinions about home security. <laughs> Yeah. Guns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Indiana. That's great. Great state. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nebraska is basically Indiana light. I don't know. Seems that it's way just to me. corn. That's it's all just there a is. a bunch of corn. emptiness. Probably. So he gets mad at her and he says, well, when's the next town? And they start arguing about, well, blah, 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 it's 10 miles away. You're supposed to be looking at the Atlas. Because, of course, there wasn't GPS back then. Yeah, why don't they just look at the cell phones? Yeah, uh-huh. Stupid. sure. That's a big plot <laughs> hole Stephen King didn't think about. Yeah, he didn't think, you know, 30 years from now people are going to have a map on their phone. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> and he hit something and he's like, oh, pray it was just a dog. Right, yeah, but uh, Vicky, his wife, is like, nah, it was a boy. It was a boy. And she, instead of, like, freaking out, she kind of immediately just begins making fun of him. Well, she throws up. But but, yeah, she throws up, and then she goes... Way to go. Yeah, she calls him, like, a name. Like, wow, look Congratulations, at you Tiger. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? What kind of reaction is that? Yeah. He just mm-hmm. saw like, a boy shit. die. Yeah. <laughs> So they go uh, out, and he goes walking through the corn, because Vicky's over this little boy who's obviously dead at this point. We assume. We assume. You don't think he's coming back to life? This isn't Pet cemetery. Not like he's dead as shit. <laughs> but he sees that there's blood even in the cornfield, so they go back, and they find, and he finds that the boy's throat has been slit. Yeah, but he finds a suitcase, too, right. that the boy had, like, on the side of the, of the road. It's either on the side of the road or the side of cornfield. I don't know. Who gives a shit? Yeah, so it's been obvious that the boy's throat has been slit, and he's been pushed out of the cornfield in front of the car. Right, so he's like, okay, so well, yeah, I didn't watching kill us. him. Yeah, he tells Vicky to go get his rifle, which later on changes to a shotgun. Yeah, you know, rifle, shotgun. It's all good. Seems like there's a difference. I really don't know. I don't know anything about guns. Oh, I, I should. Let's but... ask anybody. Let <laughs> me go street. ask my neighbor. <laughs> 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 So they pick up the boy, they wrap up the boy and put him in the trunk, take his suitcase. So he asks Vicky to open the suitcase, and she does, and it's just basically clothes, like the boy's running away, obviously. And this weird crucifix made of corn husks and a corn cob. Which right, that seems. Completely freaks her out. She just hasn't seen one before, but that's commonplace in the Midwest. I would assume, since they're in the middle of a cornfield. Yeah. But there's. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's something about it that just creeps her out, and it even creeps him out. And she's like, let me throw it outside. And he's like, no, we have to give it to the police. Would that not creep you out if you went through a dead boy's suitcase and found that? I don't know. I really don't What do know. you expect to find when you go through dead boys' suitcases? I, I don't know. Cars, Transformers. Well, how young is this boy? I, I don't know. They never say. <laughs> I like... um. 
in the movie, m- most of the scene is the same in the movie. And I remember watching this movie a lot when I was a kid with my friend. And we became obsessed with the scene when they hit the kid. We would just go back and forth and just watch it over and over. <laughs> because, okay, be because, than, we? <laughs> because when the kid is like underneath the vehicle, it is so comically a dummy. And we just <laughs> thought that was the funniest thing. We were also pretty drunk, though. I can't say that that was the highest budgeted film I've ever seen in my whole life. <laughs> but I do recommend if you watch the movie, pay attention to that dead boy because he is hilarious. Well, let me go into the movie. Yeah, were, they weren't married though in the movie, were they? I don't know. I think they were boyfriend and girlfriend just on vacation. Doesn't matter. I don't know. I'm just saying. I don't think they were married, and I don't think they hated each other. I think it was just... no. Yeah. No. Yeah. They were. Go ahead. That was the problem. I mean, like. It was, I don't know, she's, like, doing a dance room in the hotel room, and they're all lovey-dovey and everything. Didn't quite fit. Right. In the book, in the book, they just begin hating each other. Yeah, they just hate each other from the get-go. Which helps right. later on, once they become separated, it makes a lot more sense. Right. I mean, it begins with them basically looking for a reason just to ditch the other person. <laughs> get the hell out, man. Not you. <laughs> Just saying in general. Oh, I thought the dog. <laughs> no, was there was no us. dog in here. <laughs> the... <laughs> Why did you think saying get the hell out to the dog would work? No. Uh, probably not. Anyway, uh, they begin like fighting about which town to go to because Gatlin seems like it's closer, but Vicky wants to go to uh, Grand Island, which is seventy miles away. So they begin fighting, like, if we take this dead kid 70 miles, right, it's going to seem kind of suspicious. I mean, she's getting a feeling about the town. She <laughs> says, look, this town is deserted. The gas prices are 30-some-odd cents a gallon, which I would like to pay 30 cents a gallon for gas. Yeah. And there's no cars. There's no tractors. There's no people. Would you pay that much for gas if it included having to hit a dead boy? With the boy already dead? Yeah. Well, who cares? So you'd be okay with dead. that? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Maybe. I would. He's still no helping them. It's Maybe not a little. dead boy, but an animal. I'm fine. I'm not running over it. I mean, yeah. think about it. You're paying <laughs> At least you can get away with that. We're talking that. 30 yeah. cents a gallon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's good to keep in mind, just in case that becomes, like, a thing. Okay. Just in case that's ever an option. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take the dead animal. Shit, it may come down to that. (laughs) (laughs) So he goes into the town, he overrules her, and he parks next to this diner. And he says, I'm just going to go in the diner and ask, you know, where people are, where I should go. And he goes in and he sees that the the menu on the wall is is outdated. It's way outdated. It's from like 1964. And this is taking place what? 1976, I would assume, because he says 12 years later. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. So, but I mean, there's nothing, there's nobody there. Right, right. Which is kind of creepy. Yeah, I would have just kept driving. I would have, too. I At that just, point, I would have been like, oh, fuck it, let's I would have just here. thrown the kid off on the side of the road and like, it's not my problem. <laughs> well, at that point, yeah. <laughs> He's going to catch you. <laughs> So then he's he goes a little farther. The diner, <laughs> Set him up in the booth with a booth yeah, in his exactly. hand. <laughs> a teacup in there and everything. That would be nice. <laughs> that would be, you don't bury him. You just make him look like a mannequin. Exactly. It's the next for person, crime. Maybe. That's when people fuck up as they try to get rid of the evidence. Just disguise it as something else. There you go. <laughs> he died doing what he loved. Drinking coffee. <laughs> Sitting in a booth at a diner. <laughs> That's how I'm going to go out. <laughs> yeah. Your ultimate death, Max. Yeah. Awesome. So then he goes a little farther down the road and he sees a church. Right. That's like perfectly in pristine con- condition and also has the message out in front from the week before. Right. I don't know the what date it on it. I don't remember what it was. Something some, or other. 1976. Some, some stuff. I don't know. <laughs> and it had a message on it about God. And... But yeah, like every other building in this town is a piece of shit. But this build, this, this church is like Christine. Um... Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's perfect. So she does not want him to go inside. Huh? Nothing. Okay. She does not want him to go inside. She threatens to take off without him. He just... Yeah, but it's like, why? why? What is... 
Why is she doing this? Uh, why, why doesn't she want him to go inside? Because she's freaked out. She says, get the fuck out of here, man. And he's like, no, I gotta go see what's here. You know? All right. If he had just listened to her, none of this would have happened. See? He had to want her to die at this point to leave her outside <laughs> in the car. Like, I there's surprised. definite intention there. And he took the keys. Like, yeah, he dumps her first. He was keys. hoping that there was something awful going on in town and that she was going to be left to it <laughs> at as that point. As he's walking in, he's just mumbling, please, God, let there be an army of children <laughs> who's we'll taking my wife. Her. <laughs> what the Absolutely. hell? <laughs> there is a God. He will kill my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I will bullshit this fucking colony for the rest of my life. <laughs> that would be a great way for the story to have ended, and then he can just go off and start his own church, <laughs> worshiping the corn, <laughs> <laughs> thanking the Lord of Corn for his dead wife. He changes his name to Jonathan Davis. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! So <laughs> difficult not to do a clone pun like every sentence. <laughs> Anytime do I you know where Corn mouth. got the name for their band? I have no idea. Do you know, they were watching a porno and they were using the in the porno they they were using Corn. So like they're like, hey, we should be called Corn. <laughs> with a I, K. I have no idea if you're fucking with us right now, but it seems. I'm believable. not. No, that's actually <laughs> it. it. Do you know where Limp Biscuit got the name? Yeah. This is even worse. <laughs> Go ahead and explain it. <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> see, see, there's a biscuit, and it's a game, and all the gentlemen, they, they stand around it and see who can uh, get off first, making that biscuit all limp, and the one who can't gets to eat it. Gross. Game over. Yeah, I mean, who hasn't done that? Oh, well, I haven't, but I haven't <laughs> either, so. <laughs> I haven't. Oh. I tried. Neither have I. tried. <laughs> <laughs> I was testing you guys. Uh-huh. <laughs> sure. <laughs> If you've played Limp Biscuit, please write us at <laughs> Castle Rockcast at Gmail.com. Please don't. I don't want to read that. <laughs> Keep that to yourself, okay? Write it in your memoirs and we'll read it when you're dead. <laughs> we will read it on the next episode. <laughs> okay, so he, yeah, he he basically dumps out little pills takes the keys and he leaves all in the vehicle and just goes inside right and she's like why did you do that not it's to prob- mention how hot is it it's probably really warm and i mean if you've ever dumped out a woman's purse i mean there's a bunch of shit in there i can't say i've done that <laughs> you never dumped out my purse no i mean think about how long it's going to take her to clean that up <laughs> it's a pretty dick move it was a dick move and he goes inside this church yeah and he sees there's a whole bunch of like letters sitting in the corner and he does the anagrams of the letters that are sitting there and makes, of course, words out of them like everybody does. And he figures out that it says, like, the Church of Christ or Church of Grace or Church of something. No, I can't remember. Yeah, I don't know. We'll find out here in a sec. I don't even remember what the fuck you're talking about. Oh my God. This? No. Do you know what she's talking about? I'm looking through. Uh, <laughs> it was the Grace Baptist Church. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> All right. And for some reason, they've taken the words off, and it's not no longer the Grace Baptist Church. What is it now? I don't think it has a name. It's just the church. It's the nameless. It's the nameless church. All right. Yes. Cool. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> 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 Not too relevant. I don't know. I think it's kind of relevant. I mean, how many times have you ever seen a church change names? I don't pay attention. I can't to say that. I've ever seen a church change names. I don't pay attention. They to do. Names. They do, especially when they're rebranding to try and be hip for the younger crowd. I suppose the wow. church that I was in changed names. Oh, so many times. Oh wow. Yes. Huh. <laughs> you gotta be you gotta be cool, man. Get those younger kids with all some hip names. Worship the Jesus. <laughs> with all some hip names they chose. Oh, it was like the point, uh, you know, and then oh man, like well, and then just like the other simple ones, like where it was, like the Northeast something. Oh, God, okay. I don't even remember. We have those around here. We have yeah. the revolution around here too. If they wanted to be truly <laughs> hip, they would call themselves like. The Church of Limp Biscuit. <laughs> Only. Yeah. 
Yeah, man. Yeah, they, they had a guy from Las Vegas come in, and he was going to make the church really big. And he's the one that named it the Point Church. And then he was gone after a few months. Because all he ever talked about was how he used to weigh 500 pounds, and now he's better because of God. I see. Okay. <laughs> At one time, his sermon was just, oh, I want to ask this question to you. What is church? And then, like, it was it. That was it. He was done. <laughs> That's one hell that of a sermon, I What made. is church? <laughs> it made like... it. I was all about that time, though. <laughs> So was he oh, scamming God. you guys or what? Yeah, I think that is what they ended up thinking. He was just full shit. He sounds you like know, the monorail dude from The Simpsons. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 he didn't look like that guy. I kind of wish he had like that pinstripe hat yeah. thing going. Like, you know, <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, I was always disappointed. No one ever came to my town to sell us all a monorail. <laughs> that would have right. been great. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Wish your opinion on monorails. I can't say I know of any monorails except for at Disneyland, so... Ah, Alright. That's that. <laughs> okay, so he's inside the church, and doesn't he find, like, a Bible? He finds That's... a, yeah, big, fancy Bible. And the Some of the New Testament's been written, ripped out, Correct. right? It's been cut up. <laughs> okay. And then um, he sees, like, a ledger where people's names have been written and their birth dates and their death dates. Right. And somehow, this is, I'm kind of confused. Somehow, just from the these dates, he comes to the conclusion that these kids have staged a revolution and killed all the grown-ups. Well, all of them, there's a whole bunch of them that died all on the same day, first off. Right. But is that what you would immediately I, that's think? That's not what I would immediately have thought. No, there's a bitch <laughs> jumped to conclusion there. But I mean, the fact of the matter is it went from like all these birth dates to nobody having a birth right, date. Right. So, and then all of a sudden, everybody that's had a birth date after the, you know, that's more common has died when they're 19. But that's not what I would think of when no. I just saw a list of dates. I mean, there's like a big, huge jump of leap of faith there. This is the idea of a crazy man. He's like, oh, okay. Well, obviously what happened is yeah. these kids just mildled every adult in this town. Yeah. And whenever you're 19, you get killed too. That's that's. I'm looking at the <laughs> the book I'm looking notes at this right book now. And that's what it is. I'm looking at Stephen King's outline. And that's what it says. So, <laughs> but those, it just is completely illogical how he comes to this conclusion. Right. It was it was a little nutty. It only makes sense, but. <laughs> I don't I know. Mean, yeah, I, I wouldn't have thought that from the list of names. Now, after maybe, like, searching in the town or finding the kids or something, maybe figuring it out. But, oh, my God, that list of names meant, you know. I don't even think I would have read the names. I would just glance at it and like, ah, oh, some names. All right, moving on. I know. But, I mean, the fact is, is all the kids had two first names. The names they were born with and then right. the name they were given after the transformation, quote, unquote. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like this guy is this much of a detective. I think he's just really waiting inside there for someone to come and kill his wife because, be. I mean, he's he's not really doing much in there. You can see that nobody's in there, so he's not really looking for someone. He's just hanging around reading ledgers, yeah. like. <laughs> well, I think doesn't uh, he even mention that that he's just kind of he should, he's doesn't he say I should leave and go, but I really just don't want to go back out to the car right now. I mean, it's not <laughs> mentioned. <laughs> yeah, it's like he already had the idea that kids could have just killed in a whole town before he came to Gatlin. <laughs> Maybe. So now he's just thinking, man, I wish that was true. Let's make it and true. I found my wife right now. Lo and behold. He willed them into existence just by his thought <laughs> and they came and took her. <laughs> God has answered his prayers. <laughs> the corn god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then he hears his car horn blaring. And he's like, yes, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> they're coming, they're coming. Yeah. He, yeah, he, he takes out. his time tiptoeing outside. Yeah. And he sees that all these kids dressed in like this old Amish style clothing. And armed with like pitchforks and mallets and hammers and knives and whatever else they've got. And yeah. Kind of surrounding the car. Right, right. So they 
bash up the car and he's yelling at her, don't forget about the rifle or shotgun or... Yeah, I think this is when they begin calling it a shotgun. Could be. But she doesn't, of course, remember it's back there. Right. Because that would be logical and make sense. And the kids get her and drag her out of the car. They slash holds and the Yeah, the, the car is done for at this point in time. Uh, I mean, I can't really blame her for not thinking about getting the shotgun, though. Because, like, this is something I thought about when I was watching the movie. Like, I'm not really scared of kids even with knives. I'm pretty convinced that I could beat the shit out of, like, <laughs> ten children yeah. coming at me with I mean, maybe she didn't. I don't know. But I guess that's not your first thought is to get a gun, you know, when yeah, there's maybe. children showing up. I don't know. Anytime a kid pops up, I'm like, man, I wish I had a gun right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think I think you take care of the job just with the, your fists and your elbows. Just hold your fists out and then do a windmill and just spin around. I'm pretty sure you'd end up taking care of all of them. When you have to aim, children are pretty easy. Yeah. I don't beat children, though, okay. by the way. That's, okay. Don't so. think that about me. It's good. I love right. kids, actually. Yeah. They're great. Yeah, and don't have to deal with them <laughs> for any length of time. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, until you have to talk to them and look at them. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite part, is talking to kids. They crack me up. My kids, not other people's kids. Oh, yeah. That's the distinction. Of your kids, yeah. you can just kind of smack around and say, go play <laughs> Smack <your room."> around. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Jesus, pizza shit now. <laughs> no, I love my kids. I really, really don't like other people's children. That's the thing that you realize, I think, when you have kids, that, like, wow, I hate all of the kids besides my own. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I think it's, yeah. it goes beyond just kids. It's just, like, I hate anyone else. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what comes even before kids, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that sets in pretty early. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, what are you going to do? Uh, Besides keep hating people. Yeah. So, Bert. Not really. (laughs) (laughs) It shouldn't be that pessimistic. You should love everybody. Good, positive vibes for the world. Humanity and world peace and all that good shit. Right? Nah. September 11th wasn't an inside job. I just believe. No, we're going into conspiracy theories now. What? <laughs> Sorry, no. Go <laughs> I always on. Play that on we won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> it was though. Anyway. <laughs> okay. <maybe not>. <laughs> <laughs> so Bert is chased into an alley, but he manages to outrun them because, well, he's a lot bigger than they are, and he gets into a cornfield and hides while they're looking for him. Wouldn't they know the cornfield better than him? I would, I would assume so. I don't know. Have you ever been in a cornfield? Yeah. It's pretty easy I don't think lost. you can really know a cornfield, though. No. Uh, hence the, the maze. Unless you make little patterns for yourself or something. Maybe. I don't know. But he notices that there's something different about this cornfield. There's no weeds. There's no bugs. There's no crows. Nothing. The corn is just pristine. I don't think I would have noticed that if I was being chased by a, bun- a pack of killing kids. Well, you know, I might have noticed the crow thing. I don't think that would have been a thought in my mind. You don't like crows? I don't think about crows. Why not? You should always think about crows. I just don't. Silly. He keeps going through the the field. The field? Yeah, he's just running through it, right? Yeah, well, and he's zigzagging through the rows, so that way nobody can find him. Okay. And he's keeping their voices to the left. Because he keeps thinking, well, I'll find Route 15, Route 17 here sooner or later. Right. i got to come across the road sooner or later. And I think that's when he starts thinking about, wait, there's no bugs. There's no mm. crows. There's not even any weeds here. And then he, uh, just as the sun's going down, he, um, he's lost. And he stumbled into, like, a circle of empty ground in the middle of this corn field. And bam, there's Vicky's dead body tied to a cross. Eyes ripped out, mouth stuffed with cool husks. Okay. How cool is that? Very he different. got exactly what he wanted. She's dead. <laughs> she is gone. Some people say Stephen King doesn't write happy endings, but then what about this? What about this? 
<laughs> he immediately rededicates his life to Christ and begins singing worship songs right there in the corn. <laughs> Tearing off his shirt and whipping his back in adoration for the go- god of corn. That's what happens. He begins um, rambling that s- song twist. <laughs> <laughs> nice singing. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, man. <laughs> and next I, I should have... I should have like uh, brushed up on my corn lyrics before this, man. Uh, I can't hang on. I know, right? <laughs> I know. Next time. Yeah. <laughs> Next time we randomly talk about corn. Next time we'll do uh, <laughs> all in the family together. Well, then you can bring in your limp biscuit knowledge. All right. <laughs> Goddamn! Why do I know so much about new metal? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's kind of concerning me here. <laughs> Finally, a chance to talk about this on. Podcast. <laughs> good lord <laughs> oh god so Bert sees Vicky hanging up there she's dead she's been stuffed and next to her is crucified has been the minister and the chief of police yeah it's like a skeleton it's all with skeleton, a blue fabric right. a badge, badge. On yeah wouldn't the badge have fallen off by then I don't know hmm. I don't probably know. not if it was attached to the blue fabric that's still on them I suppose so he, of course, is, tries to flee, and he notices that every row in the cornfield has closed up, preventing him from escaping. Ooh. Yeah, he gets the sense that something's after him, which, like, duh, obviously. Right. What do you think is going on, man? I don't know. And all of a sudden, from, like, the cone out walks a giant red-eyed beast. And... We cut away, but obviously he's been killed. You think? Yes. I have my suspicions that he hmm. is dead. Alrighty. Now, uh, and the beast that walks out is called He Who Walked Behind the Rose. Right. It was referenced in, like, the Bible book they had, right? Uh, either in the Bible book or just, like, a saying on the wall of the church right. or something. But that's who these kids bullshit. Right. And, like, you kind of, like, didn't know what to think reading this. Like, is this thing real? All the kids, all the kids just nuts. And then it's the big reveal. Oh, my God. The there things really the monster. kids have been revealing is, is real. And it's Randall Flagg. Probably. Gasp. Every villain is Randall Flagg. <laughs> is that how it works? I don't know. <laughs> so then we cut to like the next day, the right? The next day, yes. But Vicky, the husband, dead. Dead. Now we're with the kids of Gatlin. Just kind of hanging out next to some skeletons. It's an everyday occurrence there. Isaac, who's like the, I don't know. The, He's like the leader. The priest. I don't, yeah. what, do you, what do you call this? I don't, I don't know. know. The Jim Yeah, Jones. the preacher. Yeah. The one, I think, like, he's the one that uh, the god, whatever, talks to, right, supposedly. Right. Yeah. But he's, like, a lot younger than the rest of them. So it's like, okay, how did he become in charge of 12 years ago they killed him and he's only nine? Well, he took over the from someone else oh, okay. is what they say but still he's still like way younger than everybody else well supposedly he has visions gotcha so why wouldn't he be in charge and he know. says he was visited by the by he who walks behind the roads after the night before and he go he tells the kids how disappointed the god is in them that once again the god had to take kill the sacrifice because they weren't able to accomplish the goal. Right. And because of this he's punishing them by lowering the maximum age to 18 instead of 19. So it ends with like the two kids who are 18 walking off to become sacrificed because they're too old now. And like one of the kids has impregnated this one chick and she's thinking how she's gonna get revenge on he who walks behind the roads and that's when we end yes 
thoughts? I don't know. I think it would have been better without having an actual demon. Why? Because then it would have been, are they just psychotic? I do like those ambiguous endings like that. Yeah, I think that would have been better. Or like if um, there was more with the demon, I guess. I don't like it when it's just like at the very end, it's just tacked on. Like if yeah. you're going to do it, you got to really fucking do it, you know? Yeah, but for the sake made... of the short story, I think it works at least. It should have been like a novella. It probably. could have been a very nice novella. Yeah. Just then yeah. all that revealing of the kids and the 19 year old yeah. age and all that could have been revealed. Make the town just like way more surreal than what it is. Yeah, definitely. I think watching them, because I grew up watching this movie nonstop and I don't think I read the. I don't think I read this story until much later on. The movie kind of ruined it for me because I'm I'm reading this and I'm thinking, well, it was all the fucking background. Like, right. so much happened in the yeah. movie. I want to see these right. kids just go through this town and kill everybody because that was the best scene in yeah. my life. <laughs> yeah. When I first started watching the movie, it kind of, like, just bothered me hearing all the little kids talking that, uh, like, preacher the, just the tone of voice of the Malachi when he's talking and everything. Yeah. Just like, oh my god, man. I, I don't know, I, I just hate that shit. And kids talk about, like, fucking eternity. Like, I don't think kids should know, like, what heaven or hell is. Like, that's not something you should be teaching kids about, like, what it's like after you die, in my opinion. Right, yeah. I just, I don't know, that, yeah, that really bothered the shit out of me. Right? <laughs> Get an asshole like me fucking... <laughs> Fucking around, <laughs> fucking around in this life. I, I meant they upstage a revolution and kill everybody. <laughs> that, that too. <laughs> yeah, I actually didn't even. Uh, probably the first thing I ever watched from King was just the scene in Children of the Corn two, and I don't know how I saw like just that, but it was probably on, like HBO or Showtime or something like that. Um, but because I wasn't allowed to watch it or anything like that, but I managed to see the scene where. Uh, Micah in that movie is sitting in the back of the church and he has like a like a wooden voodoo doll yeah. and he's just like gouging out the ears and the eyes of somebody sitting in the front of the church. And that's always, I think that scene is amazing. That scene stuck with me uh, for a long time. And like the lady gets, uh, she's under the house going after her cat and they just drop the house down on her because it was up on like a rig or something right, to move right. it. Yeah. That was badass. But yeah, I, I watched uh, the movie again last night, and yeah, something about kids talking about and God bothers the shit out of me. I think it helped with the movie, kind of, though. And, like, it gave you a sense of just unsettledness. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. What's up with the kid who plays Isaac? <laughs> he he seems really. like a small old man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he really, he really does. Have you seen all of the yeah. movies? It looks like I tried to. Yeah, I mean, I think there's seven right now. I like okay. downloaded them all, so I had them all ready, and I got to the fourth one, I so I didn't make it through all of them. I don't but, think I've seen beyond the second movie. Yeah, the third one is like worse. It's lame. It's like it's Urban Harvest, so they go to like Chicago, and. Uh, like, I don't know, they just, like, grow corn in their little side lot in Chicago. And, like, I don't know, <laughs> more dumb shit. All right. Uh, and then the fourth one has Naomi Watts in it. And it's pretty cool. I don't know, but, like, nothing. That, I guess I didn't finish that whole one. But I was like, oh, yeah, Naomi Watts is in that one. But and the fifth one has David Carradine. And the sixth one brings back uh, Isaac. So you actually get to see him as an old man. Is well, not old same? man, but, you know. Yeah, he kind of does. <laughs> Maybe he has, like, a, yeah. a defect. Maybe he's got Benjamin Button syndrome. Shit. <laughs> Maybe he does. Now I have to look it up. Making fun of this dude. He, right. just, that's how he was built. <laughs> I don't know. John Whelan. <laughs> oh, he is. He's little. Look at him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he has a gross hormone defici deficiency. <laughs> Whoa, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, dude. Sorry oh, well. about you. You'll not but you that's this. why he's in movie. That's why he's in the movie. It helped him get him where he is. Yeah. Yeah. Should be thankful. Thank God for your uh, deficiency. Pray to Jonathan Buddy. Davis and be grateful. <laughs> 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 yeah. He was also in the Adams Family movie. He played cousin It. That makes sense. Oh. Of course, uh, you can't see him in the Adams Family because. 
covered with hair, but... Yeah. You know. He wow. was in Child's Play. What? What? Oh, shit. He was... He basically, in Child's Play, played Chucky. Like, when they had to dress someone up in the Chucky costume so he could run around. Whoa. What the fuck? Wow. Social mind blown, mine is. Yeah. <laughs> Very exciting. That was about all the movies he's been in. <laughs> <laughs> no, whatever. Peter Dinklage has taken up all the good ones. There. Walt Rubik Davis. <laughs> Walt Davis. Such an asshole, that Peter Dinklage. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably the nicest guy in the world but something about when you see an actor that you're know, like that's probably a good guy he's a fucking asshole still though yeah. <laughs> I don't want to call him an asshole so something about, like, such a nice guy that little asshole fuck you Peter Dinklage <laughs> he gets I feel like you can only really say fuck you to people like that when there's absolutely no reason to say fuck you <laughs> he's probably the most innocent nicest motherfucker around yeah. fuck you for that ping Peter Dinklage <laughs> I feel like that's a good note to uh, end this episode <laughs> fuck you Peter um, Bill can the audience of this podcast find you online and in Bilson uh, come to Fort Wayne and let's hang out <laughs> <laughs> or don't because it's Indiana and you know what that is but uh, it's J-D-O-T-I-S is my uh Twitter handle and Jeremiah Israel, but J D O T I S dot com. It's like I was kind of dumb when I saw. I thought like J dot is because Jeremiah dot Israel. That's where that comes from. But <laughs> that's my blog and shit. Um, I made a uh, divination deck out of the gods uh, from Live on No Evil and the book I'm writing now, which is kind of a horror fantasy. Um, uh, with all six gods because they're called the high six and so a divination deck is basically like tarot cards and um i'm gonna be doing some like free readings and stuff like that because it's bullshit and it's fun to um uh, fuck around with that so go to jdotis.com for more soon very cool excellent and buy live on no evil because it's great yeah buy that <laughs> <laughs> and also Fuck Peter Dinklage. <laughs> yeah, fuck that guy. <laughs> Alright, thank you, man. Alright, yeah, rock and roll. Peace. And that was Jeremiah Israel, author of Live On No Evil. So if you haven't already gone ahead and found it online and clicked that buy button, now would be a good time to do it. Now would be a great time to do it. He seemed like a nice man. He does. He has some things to say. Hopefully we'll have him on again. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I guess we'll get into some news now. Very exciting. Some, we'll begin with some news about Perpetual Motion Machine. In Perpetual Motion Machine Publishing News, Dark Moon Digest 28 is now available. Yeah, I don't know if we talked about that in the last I issue. I believe we did, but it's very important because hey, it's an yeah. awesome issue. Yeah, New Digest is out. And you can go buy it on Amazon and a website. You can sus subscribe for a buck a month on our Patreon at www.pmm.com. PMM, nope. No, patreon.com slash PMM Publishing. That's why I don't say things. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, also, as we've mentioned a thousand times, Jill and Maya Israel's novel is now out. Yes, it is. It's also available everywhere. <gasps> also, um, if you go ahead to our website at www.pmm publishing no it's perpetual you can't even do it <laughs> i can't God do it either it. <laughs> it's perpetualpublishing.com you will find a bunch of news about a latest book off filled for pre old services which yes. is joe mckinney's new collection yes speculations yes and it will be available in hardback and paperback. It's the first time we've ever released a book in hardback. It Pretty is. excited about that one. It's very cool. And I don't know if you guys know who Joe McKinney is, but he's kind of the shit. He's kind of a big deal. Kind he's, of a Bram Stoker winner. He's won the Bram Stoker twice. Yes. 
And he's been published by some pretty good publishers. I don't know why he's going with us, but hey, let's go with <laughs> hey, it. <laughs> he loves us. <laughs> and he will be signing those books, too, because he lives practically down the street from us. Well, in terms of relative size of the earth, yes, it's down the street. In terms of San Antonio, it's across town, but it's hey. A, it's a collection of all of his non-zombie so he's pretty famous for zombie fiction, so we will able to manage to get all of his um, non-zombie stuff, which is the right. shit nobody wants, but we did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. It's also the first book he's published in, like, three or four years, it which is. is strange because he's known for releasing, like, two to three novels a year. Yeah. He's been kind of silent lately. He's coming back with speculations. Very exciting. Um... That's about it for PMMP news, correct? correct. Do we have any upcoming events? When's um, Cibolo Fest? Cibolo Fest is October the 13th, so we will be out. Oh, we still have time. Yeah, but, you know, start making plans. Come down <laughs> Come to Cibolo. Come down to Cibolo, Texas. <laughs> to see us. Population 5,000. No, there's more than that. <laughs> <laughs> but after that, we will be doing um, the Texas Lit Fest in correct. November, I think. It is, November the 5th. That's in Austin. That's in Austin. That's going to be so a see, big event. So, you should just come around and hang around South Texas. We will be selling books. We will be... Um, well, he'll be hanging out with Andrew Hilbert. And yeah, probably Gambino Iglesias. Iglesias probably. Most likely. Um, I don't know. I don't It'd be cool knows. to do like a live recording of Castle Rock Radio. I don't see it happening. I think it'd be really outside loud, event. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe we could try a little bit. Someday we next time we go to like a inside convention and it's like a Reels room, we should like resolve it to do a live recording. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, it would. One day. One day. Well, what's that convention coming in next year on um, KillerCon? Austin? Killer Con is coming to Austin next yeah, year. Yeah, that'd be a good time to do it. Yeah, I can't remember when it is. I think in May? I don't know, It's yeah. either April or May. I, I know I don't... Brian Keene will be in attendance. Yeah. Maybe we can get him as a guest. Maybe. Just trap him. Oh, hey, man. Hey, come c- here. Come, we, come, we've got something to show you. We found this dead iguana. Come look at <laughs> dead it. Dead iguana. <laughs> <laughs> trap now. You're in Texas. This should be a dead armadillo. Don't talk about that. That's what I'm a deal like on. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's all for PMMP news. Um, now to talk about what's going on in the universe of Stephen King. His show, Mr. Mercedes, um, launched recently. Um, it's gotten some good praise, I think. Yeah, everything that I've seen has been, like, there. people have been excited. They say it's a really awesome adaptation. I don't know who the fuck's watching it, mm-hmm. since, for some reason, they've o- they're only allowing it to go on the AT&T channel. I don't even know what the AT&T channel it's is. It's called Audience. Okay. <laughs> I don't know when that became a thing. But I don't know, since we don't have cable. Yeah, I don't know. We don't have cable. It's not available to stream. So, I mean, I wanted to do episodes on it, but it's probably not going to happen until it's released on DVD, and maybe not even then. Yeah, or, or AT&T decides to stream it. Yeah. Which I ve- assume would eventually happen. I uh, don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm reading the book right now. It's pretty good. Yeah. I don't know why I waited so long to read it. I thought, I don't know, maybe I thought C. McKean doing it. A traditional detective story doesn't sound up his alley, but I like it so far. That's You've good. read some of it. I read the beginning of it, and it was good. So what I've read so far. Yeah, I will be doing an episode about that sometime soon with Christopher David Rosales, yeah. who wrote Gods and the Lamb from PMMP. You wow. should go buy that. We do nothing but advertise. <laughs> <Woo-hoo! style. laughs> Cross promotion, baby. <laughs> um, also, the much, much anticipated by this podcast, Castle Rock Television Show. Oh, I can't wait for this show. Which will be coming to Hulu. Soon. No one knows when. It hasn't I don't know, been announced. I don't know. They keep announcing like different ca- ca- casts, people who are playing the characters. Yeah, I can't which talk. tells me it probably hasn't even been shot yet. Yeah. But the recent casting news is Scott Glenn, who was in um, Silence of the Lambs. Yes. He played Jack Crawford. Right. He's been a bunch of things. He will yeah. be playing um, Alan Pangborn. 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 Do you know who he is, right? Yes, he's the sheriff in the Dark Half and Needful Things. Yeah, I mean, he's, like, finally some actual people we recognize. Right. The characters' names. It's like, we know who Alan is, you know? Yeah, I think um, in the Needful Things movie, that one dude played him. Uh, the guy from A History of Violence. What the fuck is his yeah. name? I know who you're talking about, and ah. I believe you're correct. It's going to bug me. Hold on. <laughs> Story of violence. What is your name, man? Why don't you just look up needful things? Wouldn't that make more sense? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
I'll know his name as soon as I see it. Ed Hillis. He yes. played him. Yeah. Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's about it that's going on with Stephen King. I know. I've... I'm counting down the days till it the movie is released. <laughs> I'm kind. I kind of wish it would be delayed some more because we still have to we read. We still have to read it, but <laughs> we have to read it into an episode before the movie comes out, and that is it's relatively Holy soon. Shit. <laughs> but I, I'm I'm excited to see that movie. I think it's gonna be good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I just got a pitch of stuff to lit react although I have to basically analyze the book, the new movie, the miniseries, and the script that was originally written for the movie. Very exciting. Kind of wish you, I didn't accept that. I was going to say, when one. the heck are you going to read all that I, stuff? I don't hmm? know. Well, we have, to, mean, we have to read the book anyway. Yeah. We does could this, do an episode in the script. We could. Does this mean you have to revisit the miniseries? No, I'm not. I've seen that enough times okay. in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it like two years ago with Melinda. This is true. It was like during Thanksgiving or Christmas. I remember that. Yes, I do. But that's about it with Stephen King news. Um, I thought we could spend some time reading some great one star reviews of children of the Corn DVD to me because I love bad reviews. <laughs> I love one star reviews. They're hysterical. So, okay. So the Phil's review on amazon.com of children of the Corn, which is rated one star. It is the DVD was scratched bad. We couldn't watch it. I'm mad because we really wanted to watch the original classic children of the Corn. Well, I guess that's a good reason to give it one star. This is a new one star review. DVD would not play in any of my playlists. One star. Well, this one's a long one. <laughs> this one the, gives it one star, but then it says not bad. <laughs> that's the subject line. <laughs> so it starts off. Back in the day, I watched a movie called Children of the Corn. Well, at less, that's what I thought it was called. I think he means at least. It starts with a small town. Everyone is put in a spell and fall asleep. After everyone wakes up, all of the women are pregnant. What the fuck? What, <laughs> what, movie, what the hell movie is he watching? <laughs> everyone gives birth to children who all want to kill the town. Only one little boy doesn't want to kill the town. He's trying to stop this other. He's trying to stop the others. I thought this movie was the same as I described. I'm very disappointed, <laughs> spelled with one S and one P, that it, it is the wrong movie. I really, really want the other children of the corn movie is there another children of the corn movie that starts off with women getting I pregnant seen the rest of them. I don't <laughs> there know. are way too many children i'm surprised you used the correct two there way too many children of the corn for me to find the one i'm looking for if anyone reads this and knows what movie i am talking about message me <laughs> i hope there is a way to message me <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> well since i was so unhappy with this movie i didn't really give it a chances I am in the middle of watching it now, and I guess this movie isn't bad. So why would you one-star review it if you've never read it? It's the Village of the Damned. I thought that oh, sounded okay. like it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Who's talking about the Village of the Damned? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sugar filled the 827. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> the subject line of this one is can i have a refund please yes i only rented this to try and understand a south park episode all i got out of it was outland and a waste of an hour and a half of my life that i cannot get back i assume or at least hope the book was a lot better eh. i'm not sure that's necessarily the case <laughs> <laughs> i mean if he had maybe expanded it into a novella it might have been better but as a short story in the movie you know what i'm yeah, saying it really is yeah. not it's like it's hey. okay i mean yeah. it should have been a novella yeah okay this one says children of the corn <laughs> Yeah, with an M. <laughs> with an M. I got the children of the corn. All I got is senses and trailer. Scenes. Oh, is that scenes and trailer? Yeah. I go to buy children of the corn 2009, not 2011. All right. Well, whatever that means. <laughs> One star review. I am not happy because it does not have closed captioned. Well. I would also be upset. <laughs> I suppose if you couldn't read it, yeah. I don't think I would uh, give it one star review. Since it has nothing to do with the actual movie itself. Yeah, the, the good thing about this episode is we won't have to do an episode about the movie now because we basically cover all of it with Jeremiah. Yeah. That's good. It, it saves us time. Do we have a restriction on time? We do. Oh, okay. It's a flat circle. <laughs> or a flat circle jerk if you're George Catronis. <laughs> He's always shulking it in circles. <laughs> oh, man. 
Um, hold on. Okay. I'm looking at the uh, trivia of tri- Children of the Corn on IMDb. I didn't notice that, did you? I can't say On I the did. dashboard of the vehicle when they're driving, there's a copy of Night Shift. Very exciting. That's cool. Um... <laughs> <laughs> In the original theatrical trailer, Stephen King's name is misspelled as Stephen with a V. Oh, that's man. pretty funny. How do you fuck that up? I don't know. It's kind of like that bookstore that's by us that's got like this display and you know of Stephen King books and it's misspelled. And when Max brought it to the lady's attention, she's like, I don't know, some sort of funky spelling was going on that day. Oh, or she something. was like, Oh yeah, someone had some imagination that day. Yeah, what the fuck does that mean? And you can't have fixed it by now. <laughs> I've, I've been seeing that misspelling for yields now. No one's fixed it. Oh, good lord. Uh, um, that's about it, I guess. Yeah, there's not very much exciting stuff. Hope you enjoyed our presentation of Stephen King with a V. Children <laughs> of the Corn. Corm. With a K. <laughs> and an M. Corm. <laughs> Call Matt McCarthy. <laughs> okay, that's bad. <laughs> um, let's run through the end, I guess. I'm just waiting for you and your nose. Okay. <laughs> Don't forget, you can contact us at our URL at www.castlerockcast.com, on Facebook at facebook.com slash castlerockradio, on Twitter at twitter.com slash castlerockcast, that's with a C, C C-A-S-T, or you can email us with any stories, news, questions, whatever you want to talk about at castlerockcast at gmail.com. And of course, please support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Publishing. And uh, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. That would be Leave sp- us some reviews. That would be splendid. We haven't gotten any reviews yet, and I'm disappointed so, in all of you. I know. I, You know, whether you think we're good or bad or indifferent, just leave us a review. Leave a review. He who walks among the rows... No, it's he, he among blocks behind the rose. He who builds cone rose. <laughs> <laughs>